skin that's pretty much finished now and it's part of the Fishman and Mermaid's Tail series and uh, I started to use a little bit of uh, collage again in my paintings and I wanted to talk to you about that so uh, for instance I use paper with patterns or images that might spark off a motif for the painting so in this instance I wanted some wild animals in the background and I found this paper that I just happened to have in my studio of little leopards so instead of I haven't cut them out and stuck them on but I've painted them and to scale so the scale of the and the silhouette the shape of the leopard um, was just right for me so I've, I've repainted them on the back on the background and then they've in turn provided me the scale for the other animals. So I've got a gorilla, a jaguar and a monkey. I've made them more silhouetted so that they balance off um, or they, they feed off the palm trees. Um, but their scale and just the, the, the style of painting um, has been picked up from what I found in this paper. So that's one example. This instance here I've torn off a little bit of um, the, this paper of the flowers so I've actually stuck the paper on there and then I've, I go ahead and I integrate them into the painting so I've painted off onto the paper and then out onto the canvas and then I've repainted it again but only in painting form on the other side so that your eye connects across and moves across the canvas um, so they provide me sometimes with the motifs or with the pattern um, that I can put into my painting and actually paint it out as well. I uh, used to use collage more regularly when I, like between 2000 and 2015 in my paintings. Never or a lot of paper or fabric collage. Sometimes it would just be really small pieces um, that then I would repeat in painting so that you couldn't really tell which was where the collage was um, and they provide me with ideas for shapes and sometimes I'm for example I might need a little bit of orange in a section of the painting and I've got orange paper or fabric I might just quickly cut off a piece of that because I'm working really quickly and it's faster for me to quickly rip off some color and stick it on but if it has a little bit of painting uh, like pattern on it then I might repeat that pattern somewhere else in in the painting it'll give me an inspiration for, for shapes that I may not have considered before so yeah they're a great source to sort of increase my vocabulary of motifs as well if I'm using patterns in um, in the painting but in the instance of this that they actually gave me the pictorial content of what I wanted to put into the painting which Then I went and had breakfast with a friend in Brunswick and he was showing me photos of his Bengal cat and I thought she was pretty cool and I went, oh, can you send me photos of your cat, please? I think I want to put her in my painting. And that was just pure intuition. I had a little bit of a space that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to add um, to it and um, when I got home, I pretty much just copied the painting, pa sorry, painted a copy of the cat from the photos using the photos as reference that my friend sent me to my phone and that's the cat there so I've actually painted him more realistically than anything else and so it's a different style the whole painting is about the meeting of two different worlds so the mermaid and the, the earthbound self um, integrating and meeting uh, meeting and then integrating so here I've got two different styles kind of coexisting so it sort of falls um, it's in sync with the painting bit cool because I'd already painted pink in the background in the painting and um, I was intending to put foliage over the top of it and then I found this so I've cut out a purely one of the shapes 
one of the leaves and then stuck it here and then I've painted on it and then from there I painted out onto the canvas and made my own version of those um, leaves that are close enough so that they look similar so some I've tried to put uh, effort into making them a good rep replica of what's here and then from there I've moved on and allowed the the, the shape and the colors to evolve so it becomes quite integrated it also provides a solution so what else um, yeah I hear too so I use dots a lot in my work, but not in a way that's directly derivative of um, First Australian painting, um, dot painting, as we know it. Um, I think of it more as my influence from Greek um, traditions in painting and iconography, where we use dots and small, very fine um, brushwork and also mosaics. So I often will, will be um, painting little strokes next to each other with little gaps building up an area. And I'll play, I'll play with all kinds of mark making. Um, but these dots in particular came from this paper and the color, gave me the color solution. So I've cut out a little piece, so I've stuck it straight on there. I haven't tried to mix it in too much. I actually like it sticking out a little bit, but then I've picked up on the right correct colour of dot and put it into the painting and then I've um, varied it and then those strokes have morphed into more like from those dots have more morphed into strokes and so you can see the sort of dance and evolution of the little dots from the paper as it spreads out across the background to emulate lawn or you know like a, a green And then here I've used them again as cut out little shapes that look like scales. So you can see, where is that? Mm. Ah, here we go. You can see the little scale that I've cut out from that paper. And then I've stuck those in, again, like, mosa like a mosaic, leaving little gaps in between for the painted outline. And then I've that's provided the solution for the vertical line pattern in the scales on her other leg. So you can see um, that this is quite highlighted, but it also serves to bring the, the leg forward. So that, that was kind of cool because the, the, the colors and the white are much starker. They stand out by putting them on that front leg. It's also helped to give the um, impression that it's more in the foreground. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. That's just a little bit about my, my process. Uh, some planning, like the image came to me when I woke up one morning, I saw the mermaid with her mermaid self and her human self um, sort of connected in some way, um, enveloping each other or one behind the other, but integrated um, where the, the boundaries between their bodies, sorry, you know, aren't always very clear. Like between these, the, the back of her, her tail and this back leg. And then I, st so I had the image that I wanted to create, I keep it quite loose though, and then the rest unfolded by happenstance and then thinking about using collage and then meeting my friend and seeing an image of his cat that I just wanted to use. And so things like that um, helped to build the painting.